Welcome to Carparo. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about singleton design pattern in detail. First of all, let us try to understand why you want to learn singleton design pattern. And here are some of the reasons. First of all, you want to be able to answer what is singleton design pattern with an example during interviews. Let's be honest, that's one of the reasons why you want to learn singleton design pattern. Singleton design pattern does have certain advantages, so you might use this pattern when you're developing applications. We'll talk about those advantages in this tutorial. Another reason would be, in order for you to learn Spring Framework, it's an absolute must to know about singleton design pattern. And the goal of this tutorial is to teach you everything about singleton design pattern and make you comfortable either to use it or to answer during interviews. So here is the high level content that we'll be covering in this tutorial. First of all, we'll talk about what a singleton design pattern with a pretty good example. And then we'll understand what are some scenarios where you cannot use singleton design pattern. We'll talk about lazy and eager loading. We'll also talk about singleton beans in Spring Framework along with a nice example. And after you finish watching this tutorial, do let me know what you think. If you have any questions, you can ask me or if you have any suggestions, please advise me. You can even go ahead and suggest me another topic for my next tutorial. And please try to avoid any distractions while watching this tutorial. It is for your own sake. Alright, let's jump into understanding singleton design pattern. Okay, before we talk about bean scopes in spring, let us try to understand what is a singleton design pattern in general. Thereby, we'll have some solid foundation to understand scope of beans in spring. So what is a singleton design pattern? Singleton design pattern ensures that you would be able to create only one instance of a class and you would use the same instance across your application. So no matter how many times you would be needing that object, you would use the same object again and again everywhere in your application. We're going to talk about some of the scenarios where this might be useful, but let us try to understand how we can bring up a very simple example of singleton design pattern. So what you're seeing right here is a simplest example that I can think of that demonstrates the singleton design pattern. So now my goal is actually to restrict the creation of an instance of this class to only one. Nobody can create more than one instance of this class. So let's see how we can accomplish that. So the first thing that I did is I made the constructor private. What this means is when the constructor is either public or default, we can actually create an instance of this class from elsewhere outside this class. But if I make it a private constructor, then I can only create instances of this class from within the same class itself, not anywhere else. And that's what I'm trying to do in here. I'm trying to create an instance and assign it to this variable. But before I do that, I'm also checking to see if the instance is null. If it is not, only then I'm trying to assign that instance in here. And then finally, I'm just returning this variable when this method is called and that's all there is to it. Now we sort of accomplished the singleton design pattern because the first time that I request for an object, this is going to be null and the condition would be satisfied. And so there's going to be a new instance assigned and I'm returning that instance. The second time I request for instance, the condition would no longer be valid because we already had an instance created prior to asking for it. So likewise, for all the subsequent requests to get the instance, we would keep getting the same instance, but there won't be any new creation of the instance. So let's go to our example main method and try to demonstrate the same. I'm just simply going to put a sysout statement and then I would say singleton example dot get instance. And then if I wish, I can call the business logic method. But here, I just simply want to print the hash code of that object. And I'm going to do this 
several times. So no matter how many times I'm going to request for instance, only for the first time the instance would be created and for rest of the instructions this condition will not be satisfied and so I keep getting the same instance. It's as simple as that. Let's run the program and sure enough the hash code is displayed all same. That means we're trying to get the same instance again and again. But unfortunately we didn't quite accomplish our goal of singleton design pattern because we still left a loophole where there is a possibility to create multiple instances of this class. That possibility is there when you have a multi-threaded environment where multiple threads are trying to access this piece of logic at the same time then there could be a possibility that multiple threads will satisfy this condition and then enter this section of code and create multiple instances. Let me just try to demonstrate the same. Let me get it off this from here and let me create a new thread and I'm going to use a lambda expression and just in case if you're not aware of lambda expressions this is a feature introduced in Java version 8 and my course on Java programming explains this beautifully and what I'm going to do is the exact thing that I'm trying to do in here. I just want to get the hash code of that instance and print it. I'm going to say thread.start and I'm going to do it multiple times. Let's run the program. Okay, this time coincidentally all the threads went in sequence but if you keep running, so there we have it. We have a hash code that is different from others. That means we now have two instances of this class. So this object is not a singleton object. And this would be more evident if I try to keep a timer in here or I would just simply use thread.sleep and I would wait for a thousand seconds. Of course we need to wrap the code with try catch block. And now let's run the program and you would notice that all the objects are different. That means we have, if you have 10 different threads, you're going to have 10 different instances of that class. Definitely not a good thing if you're planning to accomplish the singleton design pattern. So what would be the solution? Well the solution is quite simple. All we have to do is to wrap this piece of code with a synchronized block and I'm going to do just that and I'm going to let this class objects acquire the lock. Now this is all core Java. I'm assuming that you already know all this stuff. If not, again, you can check my course on the same. It's a beautiful course, rated very good. And I'm going to have this check here as well. Oops. Why is it not getting copied? Okay, let's do control C and control V, perfect. So now what am I trying to do here? Let's say that there are a couple of threads which are trying to get inside this section of code and let's say they both have this condition met. They enter here and one of the thread would be able to acquire the lock and enter this section of code and then create an instance. When second thread tries to enter the synchronized section, this condition will not be met anymore and hence it would grab the existing instance. It's as simple as that. Now let's try to run the program. And sure enough, this time we have the same object everywhere. So now the real question, 
Why would you ever want to use a singleton design pattern? Well, the answer is quite simple. Why would you want to create so many instances when it doesn't make sense? Just to let you know, creating an instance demands a bit of a performance. And if you go ahead and create instance every once in a while, that's going to cost some performance. Moreover, creating an instance will also take a bit of memory and there is a possibility to come across with some unforeseen exceptions like out of memory exception etc. So hence, we always should try to create the instance creation to minimal. And moreover, this class in here does not have any properties. That means the instances that we create from this class will not hold any state. If you're aware of EJBs, this is equivalent to a stateless bean. The object doesn't hold any state. All it has is set of methods and they perform a certain task. One good example of this is when you're trying to create a database connection. You don't want to create a database connection every time you interact with the database. That's going to cost a lot of performance. Rather, you would just create only once. In other words, you would implement a singleton design pattern to create the database connection object and you would use the same object everywhere in your application and save the performance. Likewise, if you're aware of logging mechanism, you would just create one instance of a logger and then you would use it across your application to print the logging messages on the standard output. But singleton pattern may not be ideal choice if your object is going to hold some state. We're going to talk about it in coming video. I'll see you soon. Okay, I was mentioning that you shouldn't be using the singleton design pattern if you're expecting your object to hold a certain state. Well, in this video I'm going to prove my point and for this purpose I'm going to introduce a new property in here that's going to hold the state of this object and in order to keep things simple this is just going to be a string let's call it a message so instead of setting the message from a method argument we would instead use a setter method to do the same. I go to source, setters and getters and then I want to generate only the setter method. Let me make the necessary changes in the main class as well and then I'll get back. Okay, here we are again and all I'm trying to do in here is I'm trying to create multiple threads so here we have four different threads and each thread is essentially having the same piece of code with slight variation. So in each thread, I'm trying to get the instance. Remember, we're still following the singleton design pattern. So all these threads would get the same object every time. And each thread is actually taking care of setting the value or in our case setting the message. So the first thread is setting it as t1, second thread as t2, same as with other threads as well. And then after that, I'm just trying to wait for a second. This method simply has a logic that keeps the thread on hold for a second. And then I'm just simply trying to call this method, which would just simply display that message now, what is the output that you're expecting if I run this program? Just try to imagine and guess the output. Well, this is actually going to mess things up. Let's see what's going to happen. So here it is. I'm expecting something like T1, T2, T3, T4, although not in same order. But here, we're seeing a completely different result. Why is this happening? It's quite simple. All the threads are trying to set the value on the same instance and the last thread that sets the value is the value that will be remained for that object. And so all the objects are just trying to display that particular message. So this is clearly a problem. And what is the solution? Don't use singleton pattern. Instead create an instance for each and every thread. And soon we're going to talk about how all these can be applicable in Spring Framework. 
so stay tuned i will see you soon in this video we're going to try to understand the terms lazy loading and eager loading whatever the example that we had talked about in our previous video is termed as lazy loading because the instance is created when we need it only when we request for an instance would the instance be created for example if you go to the main method what we're doing here is we're calling this method get instance of singleton example and that is when the instance is created not before it this is called lazy loading now we're going to design our singleton pattern in such way that the instance would be created prior to requesting for it and here is the example of the same and as you would guess our instance creation code would go inside a static block and the static block would be executed when the class gets loaded into the memory and every time we request for an instance we're not going to create an instance but rather we're just simply returning an instance as is and here are the set of statements where we are using that instance it's as simple as that so that's the basic difference between lazy loading and eager loading and if you run the program everything works well I'm going to make this project available for you to download so that you can take a look at it now from our next video you will comfortably understand what is a single turn in spring I'll see you in my next video let us try to understand singleton beans in the context of spring in spring by default all the beans are singleton that means you can only ever create one single instance per bean and uh, in order to demonstrate the same we have a couple of beans defined in here the first of which is with the name another bean which has a very simple structure it has one simple method that takes in one parameter and displays the same and note that this class does not hold any state no properties or whatsoever and in our sample bean we're trying to inject this another bean using constructor injection and then we're going to use that object to call its methods and perform certain tasks now imagine this is kind of like a DAO object or DAO class of your application if you're aware of MVC architecture DAO stands for data access object and typically this is how the flow would be that means the DAO object does not hold any state in itself but you may ask me we have this property in here I'm going to talk about it after we run the program and in our main class in order to prove that the beans are singleton in spring I'm just trying to create multiple threads and in each thread I'm requesting for the same instance of sample bean and then I'm trying to get the hash code just as you see in here what I'm expecting here is that all the hash codes should be same and right after that I'm just trying to call the method sample method and trying to send a thread specific parameter just as you see in here now let's try to run the program and see the result and it worked pretty well all the hash codes are same no matter how many threads you have and the messages are also consistent but it is you as a developer who have to take care of eliminating the possibility of thread race condition I mean if you take a look at this bean or the class all that is holding one property there is no possibility that multiple threads can edit this field I mean we're not performing any setter injection to let any other thread to modify this object or whatsoever even this bean is thread safe because it's not holding any state all it has is behavior and same is the case in here and each of the thread would send a unique message that will be processed based on the logic that you have in here so ultimately it's safe to say that these two beans are thread safe and so it's okay that we can let them be singleton instances by default the opposite of singleton is prototype which we'll talk about in coming videos for sure 
But here is a quick example that demonstrates Singleton in Spring. Java config is pretty straightforward as well. Let me just quickly change this and run the program. And this has worked as well. All right, I'll see you soon. By default, spring beans are eagerly loaded. That means all the beans would be created right when the container loads and before you request for a bean. In order to demonstrate the same, I have put this message in the constructor of sample bean. So when the instance of this sample bean is being created by the container, we would be able to see this message. And in our main method, we pretty much have the same code, except I have now included the following message requesting for a bean. We're trying to display this message before we're requesting for a bean for the first time. And now if you run the program, since the beans are loaded eagerly, that means the constructor is called before we requested for bean instance. If you wish, you can override the default behavior and make these beans load in lazy manner, just as we are. And for that, you just have to include one attribute that's lazy in it, and then you're going to make it true. It's as simple as that. Now let's run the program, and this time, I'm expecting this message to be displayed first, and when we request for the object for the first time, the constructor would be called. And sure enough, everything worked well. In case if you wish to load all the beans in lazy manner, then you can just move this particular attribute to the root tag and call it default lazy init and this works for all the beans now and now this is applicable for all the beans and it worked as expected and when you make all the beans as lazy there might be instances where you might want to make a particular bean as eager in that case you just have to add that attribute in that particular bean so that that particular bean would be loaded in eager manner. You just have to make the lazy init to false and that will work without any problem. Although this output doesn't really demonstrate that. Um, trust me it works. In order to do the same from Java config you just have to include an annotation and let's try to do that. Let's say I want to make this particular bean lazily load. I would just say lazy. It's as simple as that. And, and it has worked. And if you want to make all the beans lazy, you just have to move this particular annotation at class level and things will work pretty smooth. And finally, if you would like to make particular bean load eagerly, then, oops. You just have to set the flag to false and it works as well. So if you have certain beans that you're not going to use it very frequently, then it's better to load them in lazy manner. That means only when you require those beans would you need its instance. That will save a lot of memory and performance as well. For example, let's say that you have a database connection object, then you might want to load it in eager manner because it would be used across your application very frequently to interact with the database. 
All right, that's about it. I'll see you in my next video. I gave an example of singleton design pattern to explain singleton in spring. However, they are little different from each other. In the singleton design pattern, the singleton instance would be unique per JVM. But whereas in spring, it is unique per container and per bean. Let me explain you what I mean. So what I have here is one simple bean with a default constructor and in our config file I've declared a couple of beans. Now do take a note that these two beans belong to the same class but the only difference is their name and from our main logic all I'm trying to do is to retrieve those beans and then I'm trying to print the hash code. Now would the hash code be same or different? Well as for the singleton design pattern that we had talked about they're supposed to be same but in spring like I had already mentioned the singleton instance is per bean with a unique name. So this in here would actually result in two different hash codes. Let's run the program and see the result. And here it is. So that's one quick point to note. Alright, that's about it. I will see you soon.